Hello. Let's put on Alicia. Shh, mommy's on live. You can't you can't talk. Hi. Okay. Go find your sisters. Hi guys. Thanks for joining us. Hello. All right, here we are. They can hear you. You have to be quiet. Hi, everyone. We're waiting for our Olisha. Hey. Hey. Oh, you turban today. Yeah, because I had my hair. It looked like this oh, right no, now. We don't need to see all of that. <laughs> I did my part little time, and people was like, "Why your part back here?" <laughs> <laughs> That's too much I much information. I want y'all to talk about me. So hold on, my little hang time. I got. I'm breathing it as we, when we were talking. Okay. So I'm excited about today because it's a it's a topic that people get wrong. I don't want to say they get wrong, but they go about it in the incorrect way or yes. a way that's not going to grow their business. So I want to start off with a question. First off, um, what is branding? Not Fil finish that branding is not selling. It is okay. not, it's not, selling. I think sometimes people want to use brand. <laughs> sometimes people want to use branding as selling and it is not selling. It is not at all. Especially if you are in a uh, a business where um, you are selling a service instead right. of something tangible, it is not selling. Okay. So for me, I would say branding is not just your website. It's not just a logo. It's not mm -hmm. just um, a symbol or a sign. It's definitely more complex. So that's what we're going to get into today is the complexity of a personal brand and what that yeah. looks like, what that means. So I want to welcome everybody um, who's coming in. That's the topic for today. This is my sister, Alicia, hey. who owns a um, boudoir experience um, photography brand called OH Experience in um, the DMV. So she is my go-to person for branding and marketing with her MBA. So yeah. we're going we're gonna to talk about that today. Um, hold on, let me pull up my notes. I sent my notes to um, to the iPad. And excuse this baby in the back because um, we've been out all day in Manhattan and he has not seen us. So seen me. So he's like, I'm not leaving you. All right. So <laughs> building an authentic brand. When you say the word authentic, what does that, what does that mean? Personally, for me, because my brand is such a very um, intimate setting, intimate part of what I do, my brand is me. People buy me. They don't buy my mm -hmm. photography because anyone can do, I won't say anyone, but with the education, anyone can do what I do. So they're not right. buying um, my images. They're buying me. They're buying the person behind it. So exactly. they're buying um from the point of contact all the way to the end of okay. how I'm interacting with them, um, when I'm bringing them in, how I find out what they like, what they don't like. Um, we have conversations about their body, about, um, you know, who, if at all, they're giving their uh, merchandise to someone. Like, the mm -hmm. my brand is me. And so when I'm interacting with them, they're buying me. They're not buying what I do. They're buying me. Exactly. So I, I read a post um, the other day talking about branding and, and you having a personal brand and the idea that you have to be mindful and slow with building out a brand. So we oftentimes see people, um, and, and you know, I'm using my matrix as, as Instagram. So you see people have a business one day and then like the next month they have 50,000 followers mm -hmm. and it's almost like a, a instant kind of thing. So how important is it when you're branding to be slow and purposeful um, and, and set intentions for branding and not just coming out the box and being um, like, you're not just going to go viral the next day. How important is it to be slow and steady with branding? 
You need to be slow and steady because you do not want to do one thing one day and then like, no, that's not going to work. And then do another thing another day, then do another thing another day. Especially if you want to build your client base, you want to make sure that what you're starting with is what you're going to do. Now, it's okay to test certain things. Uh, For instance, I'm testing um, certain markets. I know who my ideal client is, but I'm testing um, Facebook ads based on certain... um, targets so right. that okay because that's behind the scenes okay but in an effort to make sure that you're building that clientele that you want you want to start slow because you want to know what your purpose is because mm-hmm. uh, like I said before people are buying you so people don't buy what you do they buy your why which is exactly why apple does so well because right. they sell they don't sell products they sell experience mm-hmm. Like they sell emotions. Like when yeah. you see an ad for Apple, you will see a huge poster of a picture. I know because sometimes when I'm on the highway, you see a huge yeah. picture. Mm-hmm. And then at the bottom, you'll see, you know, it's Apple. But the first thing you see is the actual picture. And then with art, art allows people to share emotions. That's what art, that's what artists do. Mm-hmm. So Apple, the same thing. Like they're, if you want to look at someone to see how it works to do branding, they do not sell. Um, their phone they right. sell experiences that's exactly. what they do exactly. and that's what good brands do they do not sell to a client they sell in experiences they sell emotions they sell mm-hmm. things that allow people to figure out what they're missing in their life like a good business first wants to know what are they going to sell in a way that it would allow someone to say I need this like this is what I right. need to well, my that's life. the whole point of being an entrepreneur is that you're you're filling yeah. the void of what someone needs, whether it be a service or a product. Yes. Um, so I want to go back to something you talked about. You said on Facebook and your Facebook group. I want you to speak on that because I feel like that's so key to your personal brand is that you have a platform that you're using that is you're not necessarily selling in in that group, but no. they're learning who you are and um they're you're you're cultivating this loyalty and this um this love for OH experience. So you have a community that's built in. So can you talk about how you did that? Um so the the first thing I did to build that community, um this is about it started off with I think sixteen hundred women and then Facebook does what Facebook does. And then actually it was good because it got a lot of people who were just there um who weren't participating. So right, right. now it's about fourteen hundred women in the group. And so what I do is um, I make sure that, one, I tell them, you know, I show them who I am. So when I go live, I go live every Tuesday. Um, No matter what's going on, I'm going live every Tuesday. And when I go live every Tuesday, I have a robe on. Um, My hair sometimes looks like this. And it's just me. Like, I don't have any makeup on. I usually don't have any earrings on. I have my glasses on. And Mm -hmm. I try to see what time um, the women are there and what time they're going to be inside the group. So Tuesday, I used to do Tuesdays, but then I saw that Tuesday was a better day. Um, Mm -hmm. But what I did was I asked them first, but I already knew that I was going to go live on Tuesday, but I still give them the option of saying this day works for me. And then I asked them, you know, what time, even though I already know what time I'm going live, but I still give them the option. And then with that, we play games Um, And I tell them, you know, this is a space for you to be able to express yourself, be it, you know, if you're having trouble. um, I talk to them every day about who I am. I tell them my own personal story um, and tell them, you know, I've gone through. I tell them, you know, but this is where I am now and it's possible. And so I try to give them um, experiences that are uplifting. And I try to bring in other women who do, like the other day we had someone who um, does fitness. We had a tarot card reader. I went live with her. The same thing right. we're doing. Um, I can't remember who else I had. I had a few other people in, but I try to find out like who they are. And we have right. contact. Um, and just to make that space a safe space. And that's the one thing that I talk about. Like this is a safe space um, to share who you are and not feel like you would be judged for who you are. Now, if okay, someone so let me let me stop you right there. So, your brand is 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 like a, is a niche brand within yeah. photography. So you're cultivating, you're almost like cultivating your client for for an boudoir experience. Yeah. So let's make it a little bit more generic. If I am an event planner, let's say, and 
I am trying to build my personal brand. I have ABC event planning. So you, you mentioned that you, you start your Facebook group and you're looking for people to be in that. But those mm -hmm. people are also going to be future clients. That's what your hope is. And within that, you are just being you with them. So this is, this is without the mask of how we present things on like IG and, and things like that. So this is just for you to cultivate, um, not so much cultivate, for you to share who you are to that future client. Yeah. Okay. And, and so what I did was to start it, I invited everybody I knew um, because um, one thing that I go when I when I'm in there, I always ask them like what they need information on. So one thing that I just talked about um, last week was networking. And so mm -hmm. the first thing I did was I invited everybody I knew inside the group or whoever was my friend that was a woman. I invited them inside the group. And then I had a con to say invite, um, you know, as many women as you can. And then mm -hmm. you would go to a drum to um to win a session. Now, if you were an event planner, you could do the same thing. You could say, you know, you can invite all your women. Like for me, you need to network across and not up because people who are around you are the people who are able to talk to, about who you are. And exactly. they can have the experience to say, no, this person needs to go to this person because she does events like this, 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 and this. Exactly. And so you could start a group and say, you know, I'm an event planner. Um, I'm starting this. I'm inviting you to this group. Send a personal message. Don't just send out an invite. Send a personal message to say, mm -hmm. you know, this group. Um, I want to invite you because I think that you know you love what I do. You're a past client, or you're my friend. You're my sister. Right. You're my cousin. Um, invite you know whoever. And if you did a contest, you could say, you know, I'm doing this contest where I would plan. If you're a wedding planner, I would give you a day of coordinator, or I would do your seating mm. that you do well. Exactly. You could do it that way and then invite everybody to that group and then make sure that you are engaging with them mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Sometimes I'm engaging in my group two or three times. Now, I schedule things out. Like every day at 6 a.m., there's something in there. Every day around 6, uh, 7 or 8, there's something in there. So in the right. morning, it's a positive affirmation. In the evening, it could be a game, depending on what the mood is that day. It could be mm -hmm. whatever. But you so have it's that to consistency that is important. Yes, and, it's, people, it and, and they look for it. Yes, and they know that it's there. Like I have some women who are commenting three and four times on the same thing because they they like the group. Like they and then within that group, I have a private chat, which is for um, I did a thirty day of love self love challenge, and that's a that's another um, small thing that's within the group. Ah, I see. So mm -hmm. I have a, a quote here, and it says, um, "Big brands fail." when they mm -hmm. try to do it all and forget about their relationship with their core audience. So yep. the group is your core audience. And they are the ones you've, you've, you've created this sense of loyalty to always experience just mm -hmm. by having these discussions with them, having the group, having the private um, chat within the bigger group, because yeah. those they know your brand and they will speak about it, even if it's not um, about the actual OH, I mean, about the photography, but they're sharing, yeah. you know, we did a game today or um, we did, um, sorry, Danny just walked in here and just blew my hope. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking at him in the back. It's in the car. Um, I don't even know where it is. Registration mm -hmm. and insurance. It's, it's in my black bag that's on the chair. Um, he's going back to the city to pick up. So, Hold on, I love, what was I saying? Oh, the big brand. So if you're, if you're a smaller brand, I feel like you can be much more impactful when you have these groups because it, it, it's like almost like one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you, can, you can be, you can target it much better. Um, I have another thing here that says um, when, you're, when you're building a brand, you have to stimulate this intellectual conversation about the brand. So mm -hmm. every time you have a conversation, it has to come back to who the brand is. So for you, OH Experience, for me, it's Petite Seats. So yes, mm -hmm. we're talking about something like your mood today or whatever, but it always has to come back to the brand so that's ever present in their mind. Like you said about Apple is you see this big picture, but at the very bottom, oh, you know what? I do need an iPhone or whatever. And even think about that within them. Like, there is a die-hard Apple culture where people are like, oh, you right. got an Android? Mm, I don't right. even, 
I don't know what exactly. that is. And you they will never see nobody in their ads on their phone. You know, you don't like they will die. Their phone could be cracked up. They yeah. don't care because they are team Apple. And that's the type of loyalty that you want for I don't you don't even know what Apple's um you know the logo. Like you just know right. what the logo is. But I don't even know what their um uh, what their their actual company um what did you call it? Um brand not brand is um it's white, right? Yeah, but like you know how you'll have like uh, McDonald's has their ba da ba ba ba. I'm loving it. Like I don't even oh, know if they yeah, have their tagline. The yeah. tagline. I don't think they even have one, but it no. doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. Everybody knows what they represent. Like Apple, the one thing I know about Apple is they don't compete with anyone. Like they no. are their own competition, and right. that is exactly as a business owner, how you should do that as well. Okay. Yeah. Um. So let's talk about this this phrase of never underestimating the power of your mindset and how important your mindset is to cultivating the business that you want to manifest so just what i was talking about when i'm saying that apple's competition is apple right. like that i was listening to um i forget his name off the top of my head and he was saying he's a, a speaker and he was saying that he went to um a branding event for another company, another large company. Right. And they him something like a Zook. I don't even know what the hell a Zook is. It was like some type of new um, electronic. And so he had a nice speaking engagement with Apple. And he said he was in the um, in the car with the exec from Apple. And he was like, oh, yeah, they gave me this amazing thing. And, you know, I want – it's really – because he thought that he was going to get a rise out of the exec from Apple. And he was like, oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. um, so talk about what you're going to talk about for what you're doing with us. Because right. he didn't – the competition and it's the same thing if you know in your mind that your competition is yourself and exactly. getting better and better and better which is why mm -hmm. um beyonce is an amazing amazing um person for that because she talks about that like she is her competition she watches what she does on stage over and over again to see where she can make changes to make right. her show better. She doesn't right. look at anyone else because exactly. that's not her competition. She is in a space by herself and she knows she's exactly. in a space by herself. She is she, she Beyonce. So right. then that, like she knows who her competition is. You, I rarely, I, I don't think I've ever heard her talk about anybody being her competition ever. Mm -mm. She think about people that she sees that are amazing artists. Yes. But and truly, the last person I heard speak about was what's the woman from um, the singer from the UK? Adele. She about Adele. Yeah, Adele. Like that's the last person I heard her talk about. <laughs> yeah, and that's it. And right. you never talk. And it's the same thing with your mindset. Like your mindset has to be, what am I offering to my clients, and how can I make it better? And that's it. If it's anything else, it can't even be about the money. It can't even be about the latest things because if you don't take into consideration that you are not the best at what you do then honestly you uh oh what happened okay, uh, you should... okay. <laughs> tell people don't call me but anyway you should start with um you know what you do well and then continue yeah. on that space like i knew that i couldn't do portraiture of people i love kids i know i couldn't do that so that wasn't my thing i knew weddings were hard for me and it was a lot going on. And so um, I couldn't do that. Naida, they said your volume is low. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, so I didn't do that because I knew that wasn't what I wanted to do. I love taking, mm -hmm. and I love, um, you know, getting women to see themselves as empowered. Right. And this to me made sense. Like, this is my purpose. And when you have that purpose, then you can manifest the things you want. But you right. have to first know that your mindset is a growth mindset and not, exactly. man, this and this this and this like you can't do that your mindset has to be on what can you do better and how can you do better based on what your purpose is. yes yeah so before we said that your branding is not just a logo a slogan your website and um i found someone her name is aja aja -A, um edmund e-d-m-o-n-d -D. and her site is amazing so what she said is um, branding, she broke it down into two categories. It says, um, well, two sectors. One is mm -hmm. your life and vision, which is what you just spoke about. And then the other one is the brand strategy. And she broke down the brand strategy into three pieces. And they were priority, quality, and loyalty. 
So we hit mm -hmm. on loyalty. Um, priority, like you said, is setting those intentions and being purposeful in the message that you're and or not even purposeful, but purposeful and repetitive in the message that you're sending. Mm -hmm. Um, and and you want to pay attention to creating products, experiences, um, services that come back to what your overall purpose is. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then with that, um, what, especially in this day and age, you have mm -hmm. to know what your purpose is. Like when I meet people, I never say I'm a boudoir photographer. I don't care. I just don't. Mm -hmm. I will say, like they'll ask me what I do. And I was like, um, I empower women. And then they're like, oh, okay. And they're thinking, like, you can see them processing, like, what the hell does that mean? Like, you what know what? That I mean? find that too, because, you know, what happens is when I tell people I rent kids' shares, they be like, what? Exactly. They don't get it. They don't. They don't. When oh, I tell you know what? People, I'm going to have to think of something else to say. Yeah, they're like, they're like, I, what? Like, she rent right. kids' But if you say, my, I, I, um, I, Called or I facilitate the the experience of a kid's party or something like that, real catchy. I think they will understand it better. Yeah, and that's that. And, and let, listen, that takes time. Like yeah. it took me time to write out, just continue to write out, write out, write out. Like what sounds the best and what can I remember? Because you have fifteen seconds to capture someone's in, like their their thought. Exactly. You have fifteen seconds. And then based on that, they will say, oh, that's interesting. You know, tell me more or, oh, okay. You right. know, and then even with that, like when I go to networking events, I will say that and then they find it so intriguing that when they talk to somebody else, they'll say, you know what, let me introduce you to Alicia because she empowers women. And they're like, mm -hmm. oh, you do right. that. And right. start the conversation off so that they can understand so you have 15 seconds yes that elevator pitch attention and if and you, you don't have interesting they have um i'm seeing now a whole insurgence of elevator pitch competitions and i'm just yeah. like okay yes like so it's, it's almost important. like the um what was that show shark tank that's oh, oh yeah like like a shark tank but on a local level like i've i've seen them in harlem i've seen them all over the place mm -hmm. let's talk about value how do you infuse value into your brand um, hold on. I just saw it somewhere when I wrote on here. So I want to read this statement. It says, your value is what you have to offer that is unique, important, and relevant in the eyes of your, con of the consumer. So mm -hmm. for me, the value now, of course, since I started in 2014, there are a lot of people that rent kids, chairs, and tables, but yeah. My goal, and like I said all the time, I don't, like you said, it's elevator. What are those things that the horses have on their face? But I don't, girl, you don't know what I'm talking about. The little blinders, right? <laughs> so that's, that's how, from the very beginning, I've, I've run the business because you get sidetracked when you're, when you're worried about other folk. And I knew that my brand, it had to be more than just the tables and chairs. So yeah. it had to be more about... Um, cultivating that loyalty to the brand so i always tell people when they ask me how many you know parties do you have a month or whatever like that and i say truly there are four people that rent for me that sustain my business mm -hmm. i very rarely get new people coming in unless it's like some amazing product that i have like the farm tables everybody wants but yeah. i've created uh, a sense of uh, a superior sense of customer service Yes. And loyalty with those people. So those are the people that I go to um, consistently when I'm going to test the product or when I want to, um, what am I trying to say? When I want to just find the value of where my business is because they are like yeah. the, the, the barometer on mm -hmm. this little boy. <laughs> <laughs> they are the barometer of where, where the value um, in petites come from. Um, for me, for my business, what, because it is such a um, a luxury item, um, right. it ha you have to see the value in it. See, that's why it's important to know who your customer is. Mm -hmm. Because I know for a fact, my best customers are not in the art field. My best customers are um, nurses, uh, lawyers, uh, doctors, people who have to use um, a certain side of their brain. I can't remember if it's the left or the right. But they are my best customers because they see the value in art. Because right. they have to use that logical part of their brain every day. Right. So they see the value in art. 
outside of you know people who deal with art or I like photography so much i just thought about yeah. it, but that makes perfect sense it is that's why a lot of money on damn pictures yeah because you have to think about that like for me personally because i have you know a degree in art and then a degree in business i have to see things uh both ways right. but um within that space like you have to know who your client is like you have to know you have to write it down mm -hmm. and then for me for me like I have, I've already, I wrote down who my ideal client is. And you is. framed it. <laughs> After, listen. <laughs> so I see this because the way your brain works, the way, I'm going to drop y'all with some knowledge, okay? <laughs> the way your brain works is this way. When you see something over and over and over again, or when you focus on one thing outside of, you know, your everyday life, your brain will automatically look for that. That's what it looks for. So, like, when, for instance, when women say, I always, or men, just whatever, always say that I always um, meet the same person when I'm trying to date. It's because that's who you are, that's who you, you're focused on. Like, you're focused on that same person all the time. So, you have to retrain your brain to, to make sure who your ideal client is. So, I know my ideal client. I know exactly from her age, um, mm -hmm. what she drink, um, mm -hmm. what she makes a year, mm -hmm. um, her hair, is she in a sorority, mm -hmm. um, what type of things she likes to do, uh, you know, is she a traveler, like all these things. I have like uh, 30 different just little things that make up who she is okay. because if I'm going out, that's the first thing I'm doing. I'm looking to see. Who is that person? And even when ah, I go to okay, okay, who fits the description? It's the same exact thing, right? I'm not going to talk to everybody. I'm literally going to talk to maybe three, maybe max five people. Right. And when I'm there, I'm looking at their shoes. I'm looking at their clothing. I'm looking at how they're mm -hmm. talking. I'm right. looking at if they're eating a lot because if they're eating a lot, they was hungry before they got there, so they probably are a person who's busy because they're they're not you know they're doing whatever, so they're they're mm -hmm. rushing. I'm looking to see, you know, one, is their screen cracked? That's a big deal. <laughs> fix it. That's a big deal. Like, you're looking right. at all these things, all these small details that come into yes. play make up a bigger picture. I think sometimes people miss that. So that's why I'm very, very cognizant of who my ideal client is, what she looks like, what right. I want her to say. Um, so that way, when I have her come into my studio, she is going to then go out and promote for me without me having to spend any money on marketing. Mm, exactly. So that's exactly. the big thing. So when I know that I have her and she's not going to say, wow, you're expensive because she's going to say, I, I'm investing in yes. what you offer me. She understands so I, the value of yeah, she sees that value because I'm yeah. not cheap. She sees that value and she understands that it's not just an investment in um, photography. It's an investment in herself. Hey, sis, it's an investment in herself. And so that is what I want my ideal client to, to be. So that is why it's important to write it down. Like, I, yes. I write everything. You have to write down what you want, what you're looking for. So that way, you know, you know your worth. Like, you know your worth. You know yes. what you are, which is what I, I say in my group all the time. If you know your worth, you're not going to allow anyone to tell you how much you are supposed to cost. Mm. Or oh, yes, indeed. But you know they're gonna try it. But you'll have but an answer that's not. Uh, we'll put it this way: not an answer, but you won't take it to heart. Like I know in the beginning, it was just like you want what for what? No, I'm yeah. not doing that. And my feelings be hurt. But now yeah. it's just like next. You know? No. So yeah, it don't. So like, Sue, Bryce, Sue Bryce, who's an amazing photographer, I love her work. Mm -hmm. Um. She has people, she's a, she's, she is hella expensive, but she has the, you know, she is who she is. Right. So she says that when people say she's too expensive, she's like, yes, I am. But this is the value that I offer. When you understand that and you feel like you can come back to me, then please do. But until then, right. you don't have to leave day. Like, I don't exactly. take it personal. Exactly. I don't take it personal and you shouldn't take it personal because you are the only one who knows what you have to what you had to do to get to where you are so right. you shouldn't count what you do especially if you know that you busted your ass to get to where you are exactly. you can't count what you do because then you will continue to do that right 
exactly. I, I, I agree. Um, there was something here that I want to talk about. Your, your, your persona, your personality, your tone, and your voice. So mm -hmm. I see a lot of people who, I want to say they, 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 they have a business and they're, they're branding it one way or they're branding it in a way that does not, is not a reflection of their company or their product or their service. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, we see so many people that call themselves luxury and they will put luxury in their, in their tagline. But then when you see their business or you go to their, um, their visuals, you don't see luxury. So yeah. for me, it's don't call out what it is, embody it, be that, that thing. Yeah. So you don't have to label it. So other people are putting that tag on it because you don't have to, because it's, it's, in, it's there, it's embedded. So my, I guess the question is, um, how important is your tone, your personality, and like the persona that you're portraying to your brand? For me, it's everything because, mm -hmm. as I said, my brand is me. So I curse a lot. Like you. Me too. <laughs> so when my, when my, I call them my beauties, and in my group, that's what I call my beauties. When my beauties come to me and they talk to me, and, you know, I don't want someone that's going to come in and try to change, like, who I am when I'm trying to talk to them because I'm very uh -huh. real with what I'm telling them about themselves and about me. So right. I don't want to have to change me to try to get a sale. Like that, <laughs> like that is not what you want to do because you can only do that for so long. Like you can Indeed. only do who you are for so long. Like I said, it's like exactly. being in a relationship. Like if you know that, you know, you have to wear makeup every day because he don't know or yeah. she don't know what you look like without makeup. And then you go that one day without makeup. They're like, who the hell are you? Like, you don't <laughs> right. do that. And exactly. so, you do so that that's, for piece, that's, that's that authenticity. If it's not there, yeah. then you're you're almost like, you're, you're, who are you? Who is the brand? Exactly. Like, I, why would you want to do that to yourself? Especially if you are thinking that you're going to have this business and you want to make sure this business has long, longevity. Why would you yeah. want to set yourself up to act like someone who you are not? You can't keep that up. And it right. needs to be hard to. That's stressful. Like, that's a lot of stress. Right. What about people who say, because I remember in the very beginning, we had these conversations about mm -hmm. um, being a, a, a black woman and having a brand that you want to transcend all markets and not showing your face. Like, that's that's something we had to think about, right? So we did. I remember. Do you, um, and, and it took me, like, I was really going back and forth. Like, do I want to um, put this face out there for my brand and will that hurt or help me? And so I can't even remember what the, what the when it was. I think I did, like, a, um, a video that was, like, a time lapse. And mm -hmm. that, was, that was how I put the brand with the face. And from then, it was, it, this is it. So like you said, you don't have to hide behind or, or have this um, almost like an alter ego, like this company mm -hmm. is some random thing and you, it's not connected to a person. Yeah. I think um, being Black women, we, we have a different view on that than our white counterparts because we have been in a space to want to include everybody. And I think that um, personally for me now, I know my ideal client is a black woman. Like that's just who she is and that's who I want for me. Right. And I'm not afraid to say that because I understand that what I am doing and my purpose is important to my sisters. So I am going to express that. Now you can come in my group because I'm going to love you either way. Yes. But when I am showing my... Um, my images, my images are predominantly black women, and that's just who it is. And I don't particularly care if someone gets offended by that because it is my brand. Like, it's my yeah. brand, and it's who I want to show, especially if I'm saying I want to empower you, and then I'm showing people that don't look like you. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make sense. But then, so, so, so this is my thing when people say, um, well, how can you sell a service and 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 have a product if people don't know who you are or don't even see you in my head like when i i'm more likely to buy something because you know i'm an online shopper when mm -hmm. i see the person behind 
the 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 service or the brand because they'll have like a picture with them their family anything and mm -hmm. um just so that is this this some kind of connection with your, that, with your client that's what i said like people buy the why they yeah. don't buy people especially our consumers are women like our consumers are women Indeed. women yes have buying power i don't care what you what you what you sell women have the buying power like especially in this space right now black women have the buying power because there are more entrepreneurs that are black women than ever yes. so we are the fastest growing um segment of the population that are entrepreneurs so we have the buying power it's just that we just have to use it and we have to know. And not saying we have to use it because they're using it. I mean, we are using it. Yeah. But people want to know who you are. They want to know, you know, what you're about and the why. So yes. you really have to um, make it about you and make it known, like, this is what I do. This is who I am. Because I said, you don't want to have to. Oh, what are you going to do? You don't want to have to um, put on a facade if that's not yes. you. You don't exactly. want, like. Even though what I said, like, I, this is the other thing that I want to tell people, too. You don't have to be your ideal client. I mm -hmm. think sometimes people really feel like, well, oh, my. Oh, that's, that's a good one. Because I think they do. People, they have that misconception. That's not true. Like, your yeah. ideal client, you, you might not even be your own consumer. Yes. But that's okay. Because yeah. that's, you know, you're not selling to you. You are not selling to you. You have to know who that person is. Like my person is totally different than who I am. Right. And so, and even with that, like I'm not in a sorority, you know, um, the links, I put that on there, you know, uh, this different things that I have on here is not necessarily me. I have bits and pieces that are that right. but everything on there is not me. And that's important. Like you have to know that you may not sell to you. You are not your ideal client. And I think sometimes people get that confused. So they mm -hmm. will build like they'll build um, excuse me, things out based on what they like instead I of actually to see, you know, what other people like, like who's their client, what do they like? Because exactly. if you do it based on that, then you'll always have that 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 base. But if you do it based on what you like, then that that might not work oh, out. No. Yes. Yeah. What let's talk about visuals because I think both of us our visuals are so key to attracting people to our businesses. And I'm just gonna put it out there. If you don't have professional pictures and you're promoting your product, yep. you don't waste your time. Yep. Do not waste your time. Like what I started to do when I when people send me back like the real events and they're not professional, I'll put it on my story, but it won't mm -hmm. be on my feed. Because mm -hmm. I, I I have to make sure that the products are presented in a very, I don't want to say professional because they could be in professional way, but just the visuals are on a thousand. I can't not have professional pictures on that, on that um, post. Yeah. And that builds into what you said, like with your luxury brand, like for me, because like I said, what I do is so intimate. I have, to, I do have to reach out to other people, to, uh, to women and say, um, and they're not models, but I'll just reach out and say, Hey, you know, um, I need, I'm looking for this certain person. So I'll reach out to them and say, Hey, you know, um, would you be willing to do a shoot? Because I have clients who do not want me or cannot based on what their, um, their career is, cannot show their picture at all. So I need to make sure that I am always having, um, images because that's my business so i need to always right. make sure that i am having those images to put on social media and then would tie that into whatever else i'm doing but mm -hmm. you have to, like that is dead serious you can yeah. you have to do that because especially if you are a um a creator or a creative like yeah. you have you can sell stuff and people are like oh that's what you do like oh okay like uh <laughs> And it's true because I have that conversation. So when I tell people I rent kids furnishes and chairs and they got the what? Mm -hmm. I go to my phone and I have a I have my favorites and I click on the images and they're like, That's a kids party? Yes, sir. This is this is the brand. And immediately whole disposition changes and then they start to ask the questions and I'll yeah. put the card. You know? So the visuals are so key to making putting everything together, that foundation, so that people understand who the brand or what the brand is. 
And that's important because, and then not only with that, it's important to make those connections, especially if you're an event planner, especially if you, you know, or even what you're doing, like it's important to have those connections with photographers or videographers, yes. especially for video, because video is becoming very, very big. So with that, like to make those, those uh, networks to say, you know, I'm doing this event. Can you come and just shoot, you know, the setup and, right. You come and just, you know, I may pay you and pay what they are worth because yes. the more experience that they have, the more money they are going to want. Unless you, you know, they are a friend or whatever, unless you go and take a class and yeah. say, you know, I, I can't, um, I may not be able to afford the person I want, but I could buy a camera and go on YouTube um, and or, you know, get a webinar or something and practice because exactly. if you don't have the like you said the visuals to match your dream then it's a that's disconnect a no, that's yeah, not it's a huge disconnect yeah um what was the next thing i wanted to talk about hold on my i just i just moved my um, my screen away okay you probably hate wearing glasses sometimes because this this don't make no sense i'm gonna have to put my hand down like this the whole time <laughs> uh Okay, setting intentions with your business. What does that look like for you? Oh my goodness. You want me to put down my other um <laughs> my... <laughs> Look. I used what? to have uh, a big like this used to be on my wall. Like it was this big uh, just okay. with right. 2018, 2017, 2016. I still have some of them. Um and so like I said every morning before I got up, that's what I would look at. Okay, and I would make me go get mine. So talk to them real quick about what you yeah, do. I'll like be right back. Every morning, um, I would get up and I would look at it, like 2017, 2018. And then as I completed those goals, I would cross them out. And I made sure I crossed them out in a different color because I wanted to make sure that I could see that I had done it. And then even with that, I didn't realize that I had done so much um, based on what my, my, my goals and my dreams were for 2018 until I realized like, damn, it's December. And I'm looking at them like, well, I had 11 things on here and I literally did 10 of them. Right. And you, you like, you need that, like your brain, if you want to focus and I have it in my bedroom, I have it in my um, mm -hmm. bathroom. I have it everywhere that I need to have it, that I know I'm going to see it every single day. And this is not just business. This is just in life. In yeah. general, like you have to write down yeah. what you want because you can say it, but it's not the same thing when you put that intention behind what your, it is you're doing. Yeah, yes. your work. Like it, yes. even for me, like I have a, um, a manifestation journal where I write down exactly, like I'll put the date, whatever date it is, but then I'll write down exactly what I want. And with that, I put the intentions behind it. So I I put the emotions behind it, uh, whatever I'm feeling, I'm envisioning, what I look like, what I'm dressed with, like everything I'm putting down on that paper. And it works. Exactly. And we'll talk exactly. about this. It works. Exactly. Yeah. So I went to, mine is in my closet because mm -hmm. that is that is the space. I don't want to keep it in the bathroom because it's going to get wet or messed up. Yeah. So mine is in my closet um, as soon as you walk in. And basically, I, I did this in 2018, but mm -hmm. I haven't taken it down because I haven't completed everything that's on it. And for yeah. me, it was a, at a vision party I went to. But prior to that, I write it down. I wrote it down in, like, like you said, a manifestation journal. But I wanted to put visuals to it to make it like a collage. So, yeah. And I broke it down into categories. So I have me, husband, we'll say husband, um, mm -hmm. babies, and then business. And mm -hmm. the, the, um, so it's quarters. And each time that something is accomplished, I, I put a, a check next to yeah. it. I don't take it down. I put a check. And what I realized is that, like you said, you're training your brain to see something. Every morning, I just go and I'll say, okay, I have 10 more things on the list to look at. Mm -hmm. So let's knock this out. And be yeah. purposeful on what's the next thing. Because you can't yeah. do everything at once. But what's the next thing to, um, to manifest? <laughs> And that is what I try to tell, uh, especially the beauties in my group. Like you have to set your intentions yes. because if you don't set your intentions. Like I, like when we talked about knowing your worth, if you don't know what your worth is, someone will set it for you. Right. Because 
they're going to tell you who you are and what you are worth. But if you know what you, who you are and what you're worth, no one can tell you who you are and what you're worth. So for me, um, just right, like I have business and then I have personal. Yes. And I have it framed just like this. I have it framed. I got an Ikea frame and then I have um, a line down the middle and I have business and then I have personal. And exactly. I've already like checked things off in the boxes. I think I have maybe nine in uh, for business and like 10 for personal. And I've already at least five of them. And it's just because I you, you set the intention and then not only just setting the intention, you have to put the work in. Like you got to put yes. the work in. Like you can, yes. you can imagine your whole life coming, you're walking like everything. But if you don't put the, in, you put the intention and then you have to do the work. Exactly. And I think for me, like I'm a daydream. I daydream all the time. My imagination is always there, but yeah. I have to stop myself and say, okay, but if this is what you want to do, how are you, how are you going to get there? And exactly. what are the steps you need to get there? Um, because I think sometimes people create problems without solutions. So if you create a problem without a solution, then you just you just one big ass problem and nobody has time for that. Like you you need to be a problem solver. And that's um having a growth mindset is a part of that. Growth mind Indeed. people have growth minds are problem solvers. Like that's and, what you need that, to be a that problem. Transcends personal business or, or it doesn't matter. It's every aspect of life. Um there's a book that um I found on Amazon that I'm going to purchase. It's called, I'm trying to um, pull up the picture. It's 22 mm -hmm. Immutable Laws of Branding. And mm -hmm. um, that is something that I feel like you have to do the research and you can't just be on podcasts and yep. looking at blogs and listen to people's lives. You have to sit down and actually read and do the research. Like if it's going to Barnes and Nobles on a Saturday and just doing, um, just picking up the books that you see and you like, um, mm -hmm. I would do that. So this book, I'm going to show you the cover of it. It goes over uh, branding strategies. Hold on. I'm trying to figure out where the heck. Um, I need to be. Here it is. It's, it's under messages. Uh, and if they have an ebook, um, I don't know. But this is it right here. And you know what? It's going to come in reverse, isn't it? Yeah. But it's okay. um, the 22... Who's the author? immutable laws of branding and it's by who is it by um l a l mm -hmm. r i e s and then laura r i e s but okay. i would this is a book that i would look for and um and get to just start you off on understanding branding is just more than your logo and your slogan and how yeah. trend, how your brand can translate to sales by building that authenticity, building mm -hmm. that um, loyalty to to what you do. So we're about to run out of time, but is there anything um, that you wanted to share that's coming up for OH Experience? Um, right now, uh, other than me traveling, that's the biggest yes. thing. Um, I am going to be shooting um, in Greece coming up in um, April. Okay. And excited about that. Um, and just trying to the same thing, like you said, with branding, trying to figure, trying to get my ideal client. And, uh, you know, I just, as, as always, education, just bought some other things that I'm going to be working on to try to pinpoint um, finding those ideal clients. So Facebook, if you ladies or men, whoever has businesses is not on Facebook um, ads manager, you need to get on because it will go in. And I just learned this. It goes um <coughs> To exactly. ad manager is, is that what it's called? I gotta look to see what it is exactly, but you can actually pinpoint down to what they like to eat, what they like to drink, um, and it'll oh, tell wow. you like everything is right there. That's one of the webinar that I just bought, and it tells you everything about that person. So when you run ads, like you can literally run an ad to that group of select mm -hmm. people. So wow. that. I'm moving into now because I know what my purpose is. I know my why. Uh, I have all that, my brand and everything down. Now it's the next step is to make sure that I am meeting my client, my ideal client. Mm -hmm. exactly. exactly. So, and just traveling. That's, that's all I want to do is travel, be a traveling boudoir photographer. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, 
so for me, I have two things that are that are really pressing right now. Not pressing, but it's um, where the business is moving toward. So the first thing is, everyone, um, look on my feed. There is an ad, also in my story, um, and in the link in my bio for our GoFundMe that we are um, running mm -hmm. to campaign for a uh, what are we campaigning for? For a uh, van. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Because summer is coming and a yeah. sister needs some space. Um, yeah. So that is the campaign for that. And we're built in within that campaign. So not so it's not just um, not returning anything. So we have a lot of discounted uh, petite seat rentals. So for different packages, I think 6, 15, and 25. So it's all inclusive within... Um, within that crowdfund. And then the last thing is, I see Kalia just came on. Hey, Kalia and I of the Party Muse are doing um, a masterclass, which is gonna be March 30th. Very few people. <laughs> it's okay, girl. We, I, oh, that's, then that's another thing. All of these videos will be on my YouTube channel. I believe yeah. it's Petite Seats NJ, but the link um, is also in, in my bio. But um, that... <laughs> I don't know. I lost my did. whole train of thought. I don't know what I just did. I was trying to do something else. <laughs> oh, you got some sparkles going on. I don't know. Okay, what. so yeah, so back, so the master's class, which will be um, just the culminating of of shared experiences. Um, Kalia of the Party Muse and I are, are are hosting this in Tribeca at the end of March. So March thirtieth is the, the last Saturday of the month, and it's a space. It's a very intimate space. Um, seats for thirty five. Um, uh, for people to come in and just get that one-on-one -on -one, um, coaching, get that one-on-one -on -one behind the scenes, like feed, uh, excuse me, behind the scenes, um, intellectual property, whatever. We're giving away the whole basket. So definitely sign up for that. Um, the links are in uh, my bio as well. And that's about it. Yeah. So thank you for joining us. Yes. Greatly appreciate it. And I'm going to see if you, you said you can save it on your joy. So I'll, probably, I'll try to put it in my group. Um, okay. Yes. I'm going to, um, um, I'm going to save it and then I'm going to make it a, a link on YouTube so that okay. it's, um, it's there, but, um, that's, that's it. So I'll see everybody next week. Um, next week, Sunday. All right. Thank oh, you. We have to, I have to, um, I have to pin something, right? The branding. I never do this. Okay, I don't know. I wasn't going. Yeah, yeah, you have to pin it. Okay, there you go. There you go. All right then. All right. Love you. Love you too.